Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Learning has been vital to my small business journey. I've taken a lot of free and affordable creative career classes at almost every phase of my handmade business, and Skillshare's quality is top-notch. The classes are very accessible and fun to do. I'm taking this class called Confidence for Creatives by Eugenia Washington. I love the idea of creating a confidence kit that I can return to because I feel fear and self-doubt a lot. After overcoming the initial self-judgment as I work through these simple exercises, I got into it and really feel like I have my own back. Whether it be starting an Etsy shop or refining your product photography or building your online presence, check out Skillshare's extensive class library to support your intentions for this year. Jumpstart your 2023 goals now with this exclusive offer. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Hello, my name is Chanel. I'm a bookbinder based in Los Angeles, Tongva land, and today I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts around starting a bookbinding business. This is meant to be a fairly introductory video um, it's a chance for me to really reflect on my own beginnings and think about what I might do differently if I were to start again. So be aware that I am speaking from my own experience. I've been operating Bitter Melon Bindery as a side hustle for four years since 2017. And then I went full time in 2021. So I have been um, going full time for two years. I'm assuming that you're already bookbinding a lot and you're confident in your book designs and you're ready to share them with more people. Each person's circumstances and experiences are different and unique, so take what resonates and leave the rest. Before even setting up a shop or selling your first book, I think it's important to work on your social media accounts that are dedicated to bookbinding. While you're still small, it's a good opportunity to really explore and test to see what kind of content you like to make. Since content is the gateway for people to get to know you and your process and your work, it's important to practice a lot in the beginning to really hone in your bookbinding style, your photography style, um, and even your voice when you're writing captions. Don't worry about vanity metrics like likes and follows, especially in the beginning. I think it's more important to make content that comes from your own voice and your style of expression because that brings in more meaningful connections and long-term followers. What you learn from posting on social media can be applied to building out your website and shop. I do recommend starting on Etsy because Etsy can bring you traffic that would be difficult to generate on your own. So start on Etsy and then plan to migrate off to your own shop that's on your own website. Etsy taught me a lot of things like SEO and how to build a good listing. Essentially, they offered a really good framework for me to build out my own shop. All right, so let's say your social media is getting traction and your Etsy shop is set up. The next thing I would do is build a website. I think websites are so, so important for businesses of any size. Um, because it shows that you have a presence online and that you're a legitimate business um, and you can totally control how you present yourself and your work. I personally recommend Squarespace. You can use my link, but do your research for the option that best suits your needs. In that first year, I managed to get some sales on Etsy, um, but most of my effort was put into selling at in-person markets. Craft shows and markets are my favorite way of building a local customer base. Regardless of how many sales you get at markets, I think it's invaluable to have a presence there and to have people be able to see your work and meet you in person. Just make sure that the craft market you're applying to historically has a good amount of traffic. 
I have a video about doing craft shows and I'll leave a link for you to watch it. I remember tabling at some colleges and universities and those were quite casual events. I would um, be able to catch students as they were taking a break or going to class. Um, so I didn't actually do very well, but some people in recent years have messaged me and shared that they found me at their school many years ago and they're still following me and still engaging with me. In my experience, the most effective ways of bringing in customers has been in-person markets, this YouTube channel, and my newsletter. I know that starting a newsletter and maintaining one sounds like a lot of work, but it's been really great for me. I send newsletters once or twice a month, and that's an opportunity for me to make sure people are notified about my shop updates or other announcements I want to make. I don't spend a lot of time writing newsletters. I usually try to include um, an announcement of what I'm working on or um, something that customers should look out for. Um, and then I include a little um, personal note. So in that note, I might share about um, my recent reflections as a bookbinder, or I have a question for my subscribers. Um, for example, I recently asked my newsletter subscribers um, what they think about my Patreon benefits um, before I started. So their survey responses really helped me shape my Patreon page. I know that for many people, Instagram and TikTok have been really great for finding customers, um, but mainly for me, I use it to just let people know that I exist and um, that I'm still here so that people remember me. That way I can be a little more loose on social media and I'm not putting so much pressure on myself to use every single platform to sell my books. That can get really exhausting. So in-person markets, YouTube, and my newsletter all allow me to bring people into my process um, in a deeper way. So I've just been able to find my people that way. You have a couple options in terms of how you can sell your books. You can make each book one of a kind and price them differently and build listings for them individually. That's how I started and it quickly became a lot of work when I had to build each listing one by one. I think selling one of a kind books will definitely work if your prices are much higher. The next option would be to sell multiples of one kind of book. You can sell books that are ready to ship or you can take pre-orders. Another way to sell books is doing commissions. I think commissions are a great way to set a higher price tag and it allows you to work slower and work on less books at a time. I personally don't have experience doing commissions. Um, it's just not something that I've been interested in, but if you feel like you can make custom books for people, I think that would be very special. You may have to start commissions a little later after people are more familiar with your work. You're probably going to figure out that it's really difficult to make money with bookbinding. It's very labor intensive and it's difficult to charge higher prices, especially in the beginning. There have been many times in my journey where I feel like giving up because it's really difficult to make it work. So I've had to get creative and that's why I started this YouTube channel and I started selling accessories like um, the acetate folders and the um, Lockta papers and that has helped with supplementing um, some income. So what are some other things that you could potentially sell? Or is there um, another income stream that you can bring in, like content creation? Or maybe you have other crafts and skills that you can bring into the business. You may have to get creative and figure out other ways of making money besides selling books 
so that you can build a sustainable business. Unless you're a really fast bookmaking machine. That's all the thoughts I have for you today. I hope that I've dropped some seeds for you to think about. I'm happy to expand on anything that I've shared today. And I'd be happy to make more of these types of videos to help you out. It's really exciting that you're thinking of starting a bookbinding business. I'm hoping that there will be more and more bookbinding businesses that sprout. I want to emphasize the importance of finding your style and your voice because I think those things will take you far. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!